The series begins with the introduction of a chef named Kai as he is cooking in a restaurant kitchen. Shortly afterward, the owner of the restaurant named Tommy comes up to Kai in a rage. He was angry because Kai made the wrong order for his customer and caused Tommy and another waiter to be beaten by the customer. The customer turned out to be a group of people from a triad group. Triad is a group that is highly feared by everyone. Seeing his friend being beaten, Kai certainly couldn't stand it and he tried to fight them. However, Tommy apologizes to the triad members and takes Kai away from there. Shortly after, Tommy's older sister Jenny visits Tommy's restaurant. She is very surprised to see that the restaurant isn't a mess and Tommy has been beaten. Apparently the triad gang didn't let Tommy get away with it, so after Kai left, they wreaked havoc inside the restaurant. On the other hand, we are then introduced to one of the triad leaders named Uncle Six, as he was executing two people who were suspected of being subordinates of another group. Without the slightest guilt, Uncle Six then immediately shot the two people to death. So, that's the description of the triad group, a group that is very cruel and can do anything, if anyone dares to fight against them. Since there were many deaths caused by the group, the police in Chinatown continued to make various efforts to destroy the triad group. A lieutenant named Frank then assigned a police officer named CG to spy on the group. Kai, who is no longer working at the restaurant, now runs a food truck around the town. At that time, one of his friends named Lu Xian came over to him. Lu Xian heard the news of the commotion at the restaurant before, so he asked Kai to always be careful. Kai, Lu Xian, Jenny and Tommy have actually been friends since they were teenagers, which is why Lu Xian is very concerned about Kai's safety. And sure enough, just as Lu Xian predicted, when Kai was on his way home, two triad members came and attacked him. Thanks to his martial arts skills, Kai finally managed to fight off the two men. He also used the cooking utensils in his truck and managed to escape from the two triad members. In the middle of his escape, he was surprised to see a woman lying in the middle of the road, and when he approached her, she got up and gave something to Kai. Her name was Ying Ying. Ying Ying said that the object was a monk's fragment that contained the power of 1,000 monks and Kai had been chosen to become the Wu assassin. Kai hadn't had time to digest Ying Ying's words, and he suddenly woke up and found himself in a hospital, and he thought that what he had experienced before might just be a dream. But when he looked at himself in the mirror, he was shocked to find that his face kept changing. He finally realized that what he had experienced earlier was not a dream, and the power of 1,000 monks was really in his body. The next day, Kai goes to see Uncle Six. Unexpectedly, Uncle Six turns out to be Kai's adoptive father who has been taking care of him. But it seems that Kai and Uncle Six's relationship is currently a bit distant because there are some problems between them. When Uncle Six offered Kai a building to open a restaurant, Kai rejected the offer and chose to keep working with his truck. He also doesn't live with Uncle Six but chooses to live independently in a small apartment. As Kai was in front of his apartment, Kai felt something strange and his face also changed into another face and sure enough, as soon as he entered his apartment, he saw several triad members who came looking for him. Thanks to his different appearance, the triad members couldn't recognize him. One of the triad members stopped Kai and pointed a gun at him, but strangely, Kai's body just moved and instantly countered every attack of the triad members and he managed to defeat one of the triad members quite easily. Kai even managed to dodge the dozens of bullets that were fired at him. When Kai arrived at his apartment floor, he was surprised to see his neighbor, Mr. Young, already injured from being attacked by the triad group. Kai then managed to save Mr. Young from a knife that was thrown at him and Mr. Young was amazed to see Kai's action and he asked who he was. Mr. Young of course doesn't recognize Kai, as he sports a different face. Then, Kai replied that he was a chef. Kai then proceeds to beat up the two remaining men from the triad group. The triad's crushing defeat had finally reached Uncle Six's attention. It's still unclear why he let his men attack his adopted son's apartment, but the two triad members reported that they hadn't found Kai, but had instead been beaten by a bald old man. Uncle Six didn't accept the defeat, so he unleashed his firepower and burned the two men to ashes. The next day, Kai is picked up by Uncle Six's assistant. This is where we finally know the reason why Uncle Six has been letting his men attack him. Uncle Six hopes that with all these attacks Kai will join the triad. Uncle Six then asks who the bald man who came to beat up his men the other day is and Kai replies that he doesn't know, because he wasn't in his apartment at the time. The next day, Kai went to Lu Xian's place to fix his truck that was damaged from yesterday's attack. In the middle of his conversation with Lu Xian, Kai suddenly teleported to Ying Ying's place. A little explanation about Ying Ying's place, it is referred to as the realm between the real world and the illusion, so no matter how long Kai is up there, the time in the real world only seems to pass in an instant. 
Inging then took Kai to a place while explaining about all five Wu who are enemies of Wu Assassin, they are the Wu of fire, water, metal, wood, and earth. So to complete his task, a Wu Assassin must kill the five Wu, that's why Kai needs to train and adapt to his strength so that he can defeat the five Wu. Kei was very surprised to hear that. Of course he was very surprised, in fact, he was not an assassin beforehand and now he had to kill five people at once, but what can it be, Inging said that all of this was his destiny that Kai had to accept. Inging then gave Kai some simple tests relating to fire and earth, and after completing the tests Kai returned to the real world. CG, who was undercover as Liu Exian's employee, was then asked to accompany Kai to look for a car glass in a particular place. Long story short, the two of them then arrived at their destination. That place turned out to be a gangster base who were also Liu Exian's colleagues. But when they were going to take the car glass, CG got into a fight because she was offended at the words of one of the gangsters. As an undercover police officer, it would have been easy for her to fight the gangsters alone, but when one of the gangsters tried to use a weapon, Kai stepped in to help her. Following the commotion, Kai and CG were eventually chased out of the neighborhood by the gang leader. In the meantime, Uncle Six and two of his men went to the hospital where Mr. Young was being treated. He came to find out about the person who had beaten up his men the other day. Mr. Young as a witness was forced to tell the identity of the person and Mr. Young said that he didn't recognize the man, but the man had said that he was a chef. Elsewhere, Kai once again met Ying Ying, and Kai then told Ying Ying that he couldn't become Wu Assassin, as he wasn't really an assassin. Ying Ying then takes Kai into a situation. There, he sees Jenny being held captive by Triad members and when he sees his best friend is in danger, the killer instinct in him suddenly appears. The simulated situation is then used by Ying to convince Kai that no matter what will happen, he will try to save the people he cares about. He had to be prepared to become an assassin. In addition, Ying also explains to Kai who the real Wu of Fire is. The Wu of Fire that Kai must kill turns out to be Uncle Six, his adoptive father. Kai also saw the situation where CG was killed when she tried to protect him. Back to Uncle Six's residence. He was reading a book of legends about the Wu Assassin who was predicted to come and kill him. With the arrival of Wu Assassin to the world, Uncle Six is determined to fight and will kill the Wu Assassin. In the evening, Kai followed CG back to her house, but when he arrived at CG's house, Kai was caught and held by CG. Kai tried to convince CG that he had no bad intentions towards her, he just came to warn her to be careful, because earlier in his dream, he had seen CG being killed by Uncle Six and it all looked very real. Shortly after that, Kai took off the belt that bound him and left. Once Kai left, CG began to think about what Kai had said. She then looked up Uncle Six's identity and found out that Uncle Six was the leader of the triad group. One of the cases related to Uncle Six is the fire incident that occurred several years ago. CG found out the facts about a strange fire involving him. At that time there were several gang members who were killed in a burning building without any particular cause, but miraculously, there were a number of children who managed to survive mysteriously. The next day, Uncle Six gathered all his men and ordered them to find all the bald-headed chefs from all over the city. Needless to say, all the bald chefs were then forcibly taken to the triad headquarters. One of the chefs at Jenny's restaurant was also taken by force. Jenny, who couldn't bear it, tried to find a lady who was Uncle Six's confidant, but Jenny failed to defeat her, because she was so tough. When Kai sees Jenny injured, he rushes to go with the triad members, in his different appearance. Kai is forced to go with them because he doesn't want anyone to get hurt again because of him. In the middle of the inspection, Kai asked Uncle Six to release all the people he had arrested, because he was the one he was really looking for. Finally all the chefs were released and now only Kai and Uncle Six were in that place. They are ready to duel. Shortly before the duel, we are taken to a flashback of a fire that occurred several years ago. At that time, Tommy, Jenny, Lu Xian, and Kai secretly entered a building. Not long after, Uncle Six also entered the building and killed all the triad officials who were in a room with his firepower. Uncle Six burned down the entire building and took over the position of triad leader. But unbeknownst to him, Kai and his friends were in another room at the time, they were caught in the middle of the fire and luckily Uncle Six saw them and immediately saved them all from the fire. Lu Xian received considerable burns all over his body. Up until now, they consider Uncle Six a hero for saving them all, when in fact he was the one who started the fire. Back to the deadly duel between son and father. Without knowing that Wu Assassin was his own adopted son, Uncle Six still did his best to defeat him. Uncle Six was quite surprised to see how Wu Assassin managed to dodge each of his attacks. 
At the same time, CG was looking for Kai's whereabouts and finally she managed to find the location where Kai was with the help of GPS. She then rushed to catch up with Kai, for fear of anything happening to him. When she arrived at the location, CG was intercepted by a number of Triad members, so she was forced to face them first. Meanwhile, Kai and Uncle Six continued their fight. Kai, who still needs a little time to adapt to his strength, finds it very difficult to fight Uncle Six who is extremely strong. But Kai did not give up and continued to fight back. After successfully defeating the Triad members, CG saw a bald man whose head was being burned by Uncle Six, and that's when CG saw the bald man's face change several times to Kai's face. Therefore, CG then immediately helped Kai to defeat Uncle Six by shooting the lights above him. After that, CG immediately helped Kai to get up and leave. Uncle Six, who was still conscious, vaguely saw Kai and finally he knew that the man he had just fought was his own adopted son, Kai. After being taken away and treated, Kai told CG everything, and in turn, CG also told Kai the truth about herself. A while later, CG received a call from Lu Xian asking her to come to the workshop immediately. In his workshop, Lu Xian was conducting a business transaction with a gang group led by someone named Alex. The transaction turned out to be a deliberate murder attempt by Alex, given that Lu Xian was a member of the triad. When she arrived at Lu Xian's workshop, CG helped Lu Xian to defeat all of Alex's men. After a long fight, Lu Xian and CG finally managed to kill all their opponents. Lu Xian and CG were then joined by Kai, Jenny, and Tommy to discuss the current situation. Kai and CG then told Jenny, Tommy, and Lu Xian everything about the Wu assassin and also the power possessed by Uncle Six. Kai said that they are all related to the Wu, so they are currently in danger, that's why Kai gathered them all, so that he could warn them to be careful, especially Tommy who is currently still in frequent contact with Uncle Six men. Although at first they didn't believe Kai's words, finally they could all accept and believe him, after he gave them some proof. At the same time, Uncle Six was visiting Alex. The Triad group and Alex's group often clashed over several things. Therefore, Uncle Six came and wanted to threaten Alex by using his power, but who would have thought that the meeting would lead to cooperation between the two? After Uncle Six found out that Alex was also a Wu, they both agreed to work together and look for another Wu to defeat the Wu assassin and rule the world. For a hundred years ago, Alex was chosen by Ying to become a Wu assassin, just like Kai, but who would have thought that his strength would make him targeted by other Wu? The Water Wu came and killed his wife and child. Although he managed to defeat the Water Wu with his own hands, Alex could not save his wife and child's lives. The next day, Alex went to kill the Wooden Wu in the hope that if he managed to kill some Wu, Ying might be able to bring his family back to life. But it turned out to be in vain. Unable to accept the fact, Alex then decided to remove the monk fragment in his body and replace it with a wooden fragment so that he could live forever. That's the story of how Alex became the Wooden Wu he is today and he lived for hundreds of years. The story continues to Kai who was meeting with Ying. Ying showed several Wu assassins who had fallen before. He was the last Wu assassin, so Ying had high hopes for his success. If he failed, the world would be completely controlled by the Wu. In the evening, Kai asks Mr. Young for his help to make Uncle Six's favorite soup, and he intentionally adds it with poison. Kai felt uneasy if he had to kill Uncle Six himself, so he chose this way. After the soup is cooked, Kai then goes to Uncle Six's office while carrying the soup. Kai deliberately said that he came with good intentions, he wanted to join the triad like what Uncle Six wanted. But Uncle Six, who already knew Kai's plan, said that he already knew Kai's true identity and Kai couldn't kill him that easily. Uncle Six then reveals that he wants to work with Kai in order to kill Alex. Uncle Six says that Alex is a bad person, so he warns Kai to be careful. He finally reveals all his deals with Alex, who wants to gather all the Wu to rule the world. To prove that he is really on Kai's side, Uncle Six decides to throw away the Wu of fire inside him and his act slowly makes Kai start to trust him. Afterward, Kai meets Ying Ying. Ying Ying is disappointed in Kai because he didn't kill the Wu of Fire and she then says that she doesn't want to help Kai anymore. The next day, the ritual of removing Wu of Fire from Uncle Six's body started. It began with drops of blood from some poisonous animals, all the blood would later be mixed with some herbs which would then be drunk by Uncle Six. After taking the potion, Uncle Six's body began to show some reactions. Zan, Uncle Six's confidant, was worried, as Uncle Six seemed to be in a lot of pain, but Kai reassured everyone and said that it was simply a reaction to the potion. Shortly after, Uncle Six went berserk with all his veins starting to show, and blood slowly started coming out of his eyes and nose. Upon seeing that, 
Zan then emphasized that if Uncle Six died because of this ritual, she swore that she would kill Kai to pay for everything. In fact at that time, Kai also felt confused because the ritual did not go according to his expectations, he was desperate to continue the ritual based only on his instincts as a Wu assassin. To everyone's surprise, Kai successfully completed the ritual and released the Wu of Fire from Uncle Six's body. So now, Uncle Six is officially devoid of any powers and is just an ordinary human. The next day, as soon as Uncle Six was feeling better, Kai invited him to go to find the Wu of the land. But before that, Kai left the fire fragments to CG to be kept safe until he and Uncle Six returned. Around the same time, Zahn apparently went to see Alex and revealed everything that happened to Uncle Six and Kai, who had now united to kill him. Unexpectedly, Zahn betrayed Uncle Six, just because she wanted to gain the power of someone stronger since Uncle Six currently did not have any power. We are then introduced to Wu of Land named James, who is in his hiding place. He lives in an old hut in the middle of the forest. At that time, James took hostage a woman who was allegedly camping nearby. James said that he had to inherit his land fragment to someone as soon as possible, as he was currently dying. Therefore, he asked the woman to answer some of his questions as a simple test to find out whether she was worthy or not to be his successor. Shortly after, James felt footsteps of someone walking towards his house, and it turned out to be the lover of the kidnapped girl. The man was looking for his girlfriend. James then opened the door for the man and said that he didn't see anyone. The man seemed unsure of James and insisted on entering his house. James then let the man into his house. After settling his business with the man, James went back to see the woman he had kidnapped. The woman was very frightened and refused to become a woo of land. James was finally forced to release the woman and let her out and as she came out of his house, James touched the ground and turned the woman into stone and more surprisingly, it turned out that the woman's lover had also been turned into stone. Kai and Uncle Six, on the other hand, were currently on their way to find the woo of land. Uncle Six's condition at that time was still very weak due to the ritual he performed the previous day. Therefore, Kai and Uncle Six took a short break at a restaurant to have lunch together. In the restaurant, Kai and Uncle Six were treated unfavorably for being Asian. Uncle Six then scolded the waitress and told her the history of Asians as they entered European territory until they got permission to marry Europeans. For this reason, Asians and Europeans should have equal status instead of being treated differently. Uncle Six's words finally made the waiter embarrassed and reported him to the gangsters who were there. In the end Kai and Uncle Six were forced to fight several gangsters inside the restaurant. Although his condition was still unstable, it turned out that Uncle Six was still strong enough to fight against some people. The whole restaurant was in chaos due to their fight. Fortunately with his amazing martial arts skills, Kai finally managed to defeat all the gangsters. Kai then helped Uncle Six to walk and leave the place. Without realizing it, since the beginning of their journey, they had been followed by someone. Who could it be? As the story goes, the night fell, Kai and Uncle Six decided to take a rest in the forest and will continue their journey in the morning. Amidst the warmth of the campfire, Kai and Uncle Six talked a lot about their first meeting and the memories they had gone through together. The next day, Kai wakes up earlier than Uncle Six and decides to go alone given that Uncle Six's condition has not improved. Kai chose to go alone so as not to endanger him, but after Kai left, Lu Xian suddenly arrived while pointing a gun at Uncle Six. Unexpectedly, the person who followed them was Lu Xian. Apparently Lu Xian still held a grudge against Uncle Six for the fire that had burned his body. Uncle Six, who admitted his mistake, did not retaliate against Lu Xian and let himself be beaten many times. At the same time, Kai finally arrived at James' place. When he opened the door and saw Kai, James was shocked and immediately hid in the basement. Kai then followed him to the basement. In the dark room, Kai and James faced each other. James then used his power to attack Kai with large stones. The room's dark conditions made it very difficult for Kai to see the stones thrown by James. But Kai didn't give up, he kept getting up and fighting back. Eventually, Kai got used to it and was able to dodge every attack. James then used a deceptive trick and attacked Kai from behind, but it worked in Kai's favor. Kai managed to kill James with one attack. Then Kai took the ground fragments from James' body and returned to Uncle Six's place. When he arrived, Kai was very surprised to see Lu Xian there. Elsewhere, Tommy who was at the supermarket was arrested by the police for his alleged involvement in a recent death. Before being arrested, Tommy had called Jenny to inform her that he was arrested and asked Jenny to release him immediately. Some moments later, CG came to the police station. 
CG decided to bring the fire fragments that Kai had previously entrusted to her, with the pretense of making herself look like she was arrested by the police, so that her belongings would be secured by the police. After the goods were secured, CG was put into a cell, then CG told a policeman to tell Frank that she had been arrested. And sure enough, Frank immediately went to CG. Frank did not understand why CG let herself be caught, while the mission was not progressing at all. Actually CG wanted to tell Frank everything, but suddenly something strange happened at the police station. It turns out that earlier, Zahn had spied on CG when she met with Kai and she reported it directly to Alex. Meanwhile, at Alex's residence, Wu of Metal is currently there. Alex and Wu of Metal agreed to work together. Alex then ordered Zahn to snatch the fire fragment from CG. Meanwhile, Wu of Metal, who has the ability to switch souls, possesses the body of a cop. At the same time, Jenny had arrived at the police station along with a lawyer to free Tommy. When Zahn found out that CG was arrested by the police, she immediately reported to Alex and went to attack the police station and create a chaos there and shot several policemen to death. In another place, Wu of Metal, who was in charge of destroying the electricity at the police station, made the situation even more chaotic. Jenny, who also happened to be there, immediately saved herself by hiding in a room. Frank, who was originally in the CG room, was forced to come out to check the situation and he saw so many dead policemen. Frank couldn't even stop Zahn. Amidst the chaos, Wu of Metal went to CG's cell room and pretended to be a policewoman who would help her. But after coming out of the room, CG felt that there was something strange, and she was sure that the woman she was with at this time was not a cop. CG then electrocuted her body and immediately locked her in a room. Afterward, CG went to the storage room to retrieve her belongings, however, Zahn stopped her. The two of them ended up getting into a pretty fierce fight. In the middle of the fight, Jenny came to CG's aid. With their cooperation, CG and Jenny finally managed to defeat Zahn. In another place, Frank, who thought that Wu of Metal was his co-worker, then saved her, which caused Wu of Metal to possess Frank's body, and he then left the room. After defeating Zahn, CG and Jenny went to the storage room to retrieve the fire fragments from CG's bag. A few moments later, they heard Tommy's voice calling for help. That's when they saw Alex and his men holding Tommy hostage. Alex asked them to exchange the fire fragments in their hands with Tommy. CG then threw her bag and asked Alex to release Tommy. Frank, who had been possessed by Wu of Metal, then came and joined them. Alex then asked Zahn to check the bag. It turns out that the fragment has been retrieved from the bag and is now in Jenny's hands. Out of panic, Jenny opened the fragment and she then transformed into Wu of Fire. Afterward, Wu of Metal moved into CG's body so that CG could join Alex. Alex then persuaded Jenny to join him and if Jenny refused it, then he would not hesitate to kill Tommy. The next day Uncle Six and Zahn finally met after their previous bad farewell and Zahn now began to show her true colors. She persuaded Uncle Six to join Alex and said that Jenny, CG and Tommy had already joined them. Before parting their ways, Zahn gives Uncle Six a cell phone to facilitate communication between them. Meanwhile, a woman named Abel came to see Alex. Abel is a woo of water. At that moment, Abel brought a guidebook that would take Alex to the realm where his wife and child were. Uncle Six tells Kai and Lu Exion about his encounter with Zahn. Lu Exion then asks Kai to give up so that Jenny and the others don't get hurt. But Kai chooses to keep going against Alex, because after all, this is his destiny that he must go through. If he just gives up, then Alex and the other Wu will rule the world. A short while later, Alex calls Kai and invites him to join forces. Alex also threatens Kai, stating that if Kai refuses his offer then all his friends will be killed. Kai, Lu Xian and Uncle Six then make plans to attack Alex's headquarters and Kai asks Uncle Six to gather all the triad members to help them. Meanwhile at Alex's headquarters, CG, who has been possessed by the Wu of Metal, is trying to fight back inside her body. CG meets the real Metal Wu, known as Gideon. CG tried to lure Gideon and beat him up right away. After regaining her consciousness, CG then called Kai and said that she had succeeded in fighting the Wu of Metal's spirit in her body, therefore CG would pretend to be a Wu of Metal to oversee Alex's every plan. Just around the same time, Uncle Six arrived at the Triad headquarters to summon his men. Unexpectedly, he met Zahn, who was now the new leader. Without many words, Zahn shot Uncle Six in the leg and locked him up somewhere. Kai and Lu Xian finally arrived at Alex's headquarters and when they got there, they were confronted by Alex's men. Thanks to their martial arts skills, Kai and Lu Xian managed to defeat all of Alex's men quite easily. 
After eliminating all the guards, all of a sudden they were bombarded by bullets shot from above by one of Alex's men. But all of a sudden that person was attacked by a burst of fire that instantly consumed him. We can guess who attacked the man, it was Jenny, who is now a woo of fire. Shortly afterward Kai gets a call from Zahn who shows him the video footage of her shooting Uncle Six to death. Kai became very angry yet sad when he saw the incident. Kai is finally determined to kill Alex and avenge Uncle Six's death. The next day, Kai and Alex decide to meet at a certain place. Alex brings Tommy who is now in a dying state and asks Kai to exchange him for a fragment of land. Alex aims to collect all of Wu so that he can go to the realm where his wife and child are. Before handing over the earth fragment, Kai asks Alex to heal Tommy first. After he healed Tommy, Alex asked Kai to hand over the fragment as well. However, who would have thought, instead of giving the fragment to Alex, he inserted it into Tommy's body. Those who were there then moved to another realm where Kai and Ying used to meet. One by one, the fragments inside all of Wu's bodies began to come out and joined in Kai's hands. After all the fragments merged, a gate began to open. When Alex saw it, he immediately ran in, as it was the way to his wife and child's world. Kai and his friends planned to pursue Alex, but they were blocked by Alex's men and the Wu. They were finally forced to finish off their opponents first, so they were able to catch Alex. The Wu, who now had no power, had to fight with what they had to fight Kai and his friends. After successfully defeating all of Alex's men, Kai asked everyone to return to the real world and he would go after Alex alone. In that realm, Alex managed to meet his wife and child. A while later, Kai arrived and immediately attacked Alex and killed him with a knife. Alex's wife who saw the incident tried to fight Kai, but Kai did not feel like killing Alex's wife, because she had a child who needed her. Finally, Kai let her go and he then left. After all the events they experienced ended, Kai and his friends celebrated their success at Tommy's restaurant. In the midst of their happiness, Inging suddenly comes to meet Kai, and then chaos ensues. Inging says that Kai's job is not over yet, and the world still needs Wu Assassin. The story of the movie begins with Kai and Liu Xian who are currently in Bangkok, Thailand. That night they both went to a club to find someone who had killed Jenny some time ago. Jenny was found dead in her restaurant and left a clue that brought Kai, Liu Xian and Tommy to Thailand to find her killer. Inside the club, Kai and Liu Xian find a man who is in the middle of absorbing energy from some visitors, so Kai and Liu Xian are forced to beat up some visitors who have been affected by the supernatural power. The so-called Jiangshir then tried to suck Kai's soul, however, his power did not work on a Wu assassin. Kai and Liu Xian then teamed up to kill the man. Once the man is killed, someone seems to be controlling the bodies of several visitors and delivering a message to Kai and Liu Xian to meet him at the Silum Temple archaeological excavation site. They immediately contacted Tommy after hearing the message and relayed the information they had gotten. The next day, Kai, Liu Xian and Tommy set off for the previously mentioned temple. As they arrived, they could feel that the place was extremely secret, so it was guarded by so many bodyguards. The temple was owned by a wealthy billionaire named William Pan and he was also the one who sent Kai and Liu Xian the message. William then told them about Pan Gu, the first human in the world who was considered a god who created the universe and its contents. But after becoming a god, Pan Gu instead used his power to threaten humans to obey all his orders. Meanwhile, William and his sister Ku and Shi were named as the final Yin and Yang who were ordered to kill Wu Assassin. But this time, William admits that he is totally different from Ku and Shi. Ku is known as the head of the biggest gangster in Thailand and is ready to finish off anyone who becomes her enemy. William reveals that some time ago Ku went to San Francisco to kill Kai, but someone ruined her plan, and the person who ruined her plan was none other than Jenny. Jenny was killed while protecting Kai. William says, as a person who is connected to Ku, he feels that he must stop her, so he needs the help of a Wu assassin. Then William says that in a few days, Ku will come to the Vi Hotel to upgrade her strength and he hopes they can all catch her there. Prior to the attack on the Vi Hotel, they needed someone who could help them to provide weapons and help them to get into the hotel safely, considering that the hotel they were going to visit was a five-star hotel which was certainly strictly guarded. Luckily, Tommy had an acquaintance, a Thai woman named Priya. Tommy then took Kai and Liu Xian to meet her and introduced them to her. Upon meeting Priya, Tommy tells her about Jenny's death, and Priya mourns her death and promises to help them. 
Well, long story short, the next day Kai, Priya, Lu Xian and Tommy arrived at Via Hotel. Outside the hotel, a security car and policemen were assigned to keep the hotel safe. Shortly after, Ku and her men arrived at the hotel. After spotting Ku entering the hotel, Priya and Tommy began to execute their plan. They deliberately let themselves be caught by the guards, so that Kai and Lu Xian could enter the hotel unchecked. As soon as Kai and Lu Xian entered the hotel, they were caught on one of the surveillance cameras, and an Interpol agent named Zulu was alerted to their presence. In the meantime, Ku entered a meeting room where the gangsters were holding a meeting and she used her supernatural powers to kill all the gangsters in the room. She did that in order to take over all the gangsters and use them to strengthen her group. While in the examination room, Priya turned off all the surveillance cameras and made Zulu even more suspicious, so she finally decided to go inside the hotel and check what was really going on. Then Tommy pulled out his gun, so that he and Priya could get out of the surveillance room. Inside the hotel, Kai and Lu Xian decide to split up so they can find Ku faster. However, they are too late, Ku has already left the hotel and hypnotized all the people in the hotel lobby. Kai and Lu Xian failed to find Ku, they only found the dead bodies of the gangsters in the room. Agent Zulu, who happened to have arrived in the room, then suspected Kai and Lu Xian as the killers. But who would have thought, Lu Xian and Zulu actually knew each other. They had previously met in London. But that didn't stop Zulu from arresting them both. Then Tommy and Priya also made their way to the room, and they tried to convince Zulu that they were not the bad guys. Priya states that it is not the right time to accuse them, as the hotel guests have gathered to kill them all. It was then that Kai and the others had to work together to fight so many people at once, especially since their opponents attacked them using various weapons such as axes and knives. However, Kai and his friend's fighting skills are also unquestionable. Even the Wu with avatar powers can be defeated, let alone mere mortals, so it's no big deal for them. During the fight, Kai gets separated from his friends and meets his old enemy, Zahn. Zahn is currently working with Ku to capture the Wu assassin, in exchange for new powers. Kai and Zahn end up getting into a pretty fierce fight. As it turns out, Zahn has supernatural powers. Thanks to her supernatural powers, the fight between the two of them was quite balanced, as both Kai and Zahn equally have supernatural powers. While Kai was still fighting against Zahn, Lu Xian and Priya escaped by driving one of the cars parked in the basement of the hotel. They then rammed their car into the hotel door, and managed to destroy the door so that Tommy and Zulu could get out of there. As they prepare to leave the hotel, Kai's body suddenly falls from the top of the hotel after he loses his fight against Zahn. Zulu then offered Kai and his friends to flee in her car. However, Ku's men continued to chase them, until they were finally surrounded and their car was shot many times. Zulu then asked them to immediately take their weapons and counter the attack. When they saw the counterattack, Ku's men threw a gas tank at their car and the tank exploded. Fortunately, Kai and his friends were still able to save themselves. They then immediately escaped with the help of the thick smoke around the car. However, their escape was discovered and they were forced to face Ku's men again. Once the situation was safe enough, Priya invited them to escape on a boat. They were chased again by Ku's men, but in the end, they managed to avoid them. Priya then invited them all to go to her hometown so that they could hide while taking a break from Ku's pursuit. They are warmly welcomed by Priya's uncle, and he even gives Kai a protective bracelet. In the evening, while they are enjoying dinner together, Priya's uncle tells them that William and Ku are a unity that cannot be separated. They both have the same goal which is to revive Pangu and create a new world. To make that happen, they would need the chi of someone as strong as Wu Assassin. Therefore, William deliberately tricked them to come to the hotel so that Ku could take the chi from the Wu Assassin. The chi will later be taken from Kai, then it will be combined with the gemstone owned by Jenny, which is currently in Tommy's hands. After the dinner, Priya suddenly got a mysterious message from someone. The person said that he could bring back Priya's dead family and he asked her to meet him immediately. When Priya arrived at the entrance of the village, she was taken to the realm of the subconscious to meet her family. Ku and William influenced Priya to believe in Pangu if she wanted to reunite with her family. Unexpectedly, Priya was swayed by their words and chose to betray her friends. She then took the gemstone from Tommy and also intended to take the Wu assassin's chi. Not only that, she also lifted the village's protective spell, which allowed Ku and his men to enter the village. 
Fortunately, just as Priya was about to take his chi, Kai woke up from his sleep and quickly blocked Priya's hand. Shortly thereafter, Ku and his men began to enter the village and attacked everyone. Kai then tells his friends about Priya's betrayal and he asks them all to be careful. Afterward, Kai is confronted by two of Ku's men, each of whom has supernatural powers. Kai eventually fought against them, but his strength was still not fully restored. Despite that, Kai still tried to exert all his strength and ended up winning the fight. Just like Kai, Lu Xian and Zulu were also attacked by some of Ku's men, even Kai's hand was pierced by nails while trying to take down one of Ku's men. Fortunately, Priya's uncle came at the right time and rescued Lu Xian. Lu Xian then returned the attack by stabbing the spikes on the villain's head which eventually made him disappear instantly. After the attack ended, Kai and his friends said goodbye to Priya's uncle to stop Ku and William's doings. Priya's uncle is willing to sacrifice his own life to give Kai and his friends a way to leave. A while later, they arrived at Ku and William's headquarters, as well as the place where Pan Gu would rise. Due to very tight security, Kai and his friends then decided to split up. At that time Kai again had to deal with Zahn who still did not give up in trying to kill him. But this time, Kai is determined not to lose to her, as he must save the world from Ku, William and Pan Gu. On the other hand, Zulu and Tommy have to face Ku who comes towards them and unexpectedly they are able to defeat Ku effortlessly. When they saw Priya, they then asked her about what she had done, Priya then admitted that she was sorry and felt guilty towards them all. Tommy, who heard Priya's regret, tried to understand her feelings. But suddenly, Ku rose from the dead and attacked the three of them. Tommy, Priya and Zulu then worked together to kill Ku and use Ku's sword to stab her in the mouth. They finally defeated Ku and she vanished instantly. While elsewhere, Lu Xian fails to defeat a villain and he is hypnotized into joining their group. Back to Kai, Kai puts on the bracelet given by Priya's uncle and with the help of the bracelet's power, Kai finally manages to kill Zahn. Sometime later, Kai arrives at a hole where Pangu is trapped. There, he was greeted by William and also Lu Xian who had been hypnotized. William then used the opportunity to take the Wu assassin's chi from Kai and combine it with his gemstone. With these two items combined, the trap door that confined Pangu was finally opened. Pangu finally got out of his prison and ordered Lu Xian to attack Kai. The sight of his friend under the influence of hypnosis made Kai unwilling to attack him, however, he had no choice, he still had to fight Lu Xian so that he could be free from the influence of hypnosis and sure enough Kai's attack succeeded in bringing Lu Xian's soul back. Afterward, Pangu fled back into his prison, but Kai wasn't going to let that happen. He then went inside by holding onto a rope. Inside the pit, Kai found it very difficult to fight Pangu. Luckily, Priya, Zulu and Tommy came to help Lu Xian who was holding the rope that Kai was hanging from. Kai and Lu Xian worked together to fight Pangu in the hole, until Kai finally unleashed his best attack which made Pangu finally disappear. Soon after, Kai and Lu Xian are pulled back up by Tommy and his friends. The story ends with a happy ending scene. Kai and his friends can finally live their lives in peace, for they have managed to avenge Jenny's death, and their victory can be achieved thanks to the help of two beautiful women, Zulu and Priya.